Hello, welcome along to our Super Undercover podcast. It's our special Christmas edition. Hello, how are you doing? Hello, yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> a Merry Christmas. A Merry Christmas. <laughs> you can start off, little, start off a little Christmas car ride, would you reckon? Uh, yeah, you start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's not. That's food thing has gone straight down before you were going. Yeah. <laughs> we'll save that for after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what you've got a plan over Christmas, not much, much, much on? Um, no, I think just the usual, usual stuff, really. Yeah, usual in, not, not traveling around anywhere or anything like that. So just in with the kids. Being a big kid myself, I think. Sounds right. That's what it's about, isn't it? How about you? Um, we got, I got a bit busy on actually. I think with Dammy Mum's on Christmas Day with the kids down there, so it's going to be a bit crazy. And then up to the, the Mrs. family on Christmas Eve. Yeah, so you're going to be Both. traveling around a bit. Yeah, well, Mum's not too bad. Mum's just back just to, Five minutes walk down the road, that's dead easy. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, Mrs. Farron, that's a, about an hour's drive up the motorway. Yeah. With, with the kids well, at least it'll be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be all right. Be all right. It should be a good one. Yeah. It'll be a good one. Cool. Right, so what we've got going on today. I thought, so I was thinking, we had a little chat last time, didn't we? I did, um, what did I do? I can't remember what I was doing in the last, last podcast. Um, backup encryption. Backup encryption. Of course yeah. yeah, of course it was. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, because I did, did it as your data studio, didn't we? We got a bit excited about it as your data studio. Yeah. So I thought I'd spend this one, we'll have a little look at my, my, my top five features of your data studio. I've been playing around with it a little bit more lately, so get a bit of a feel for it. And there's a, there's a few things that I really, really like. So I mm. thought we'd just do a, a Christmas special of the top 10 as your data studio features. Because I, I don't know how many people are using this yet. I think a lot of people aren't. So it'd be a good idea to showcase a few little bit of things it's got. Sounds good. So let's hop over to Azure Data Studio, share my screen. I've there it is, there. Yet to get into it. I just, oh, I, I, I fire it up a few times and then I just find I, I end up getting busy doing something else and then I just revert back to Management Studio and do whatever I've got to do before I know it, the, the day is done. But I do need to do, get into this because yes. it looks cool, doesn't it? it just look at and it. Look, look, look. It's You've just got nice. That versus <laughs> it's gone. It's SMS gone. It's the run book stuff I like. I really like that stuff, especially if you're walking through like step by step, um, like a tutorial, like a, like a, like a walkthrough guide. Mm. It's really good for that stuff, isn't it? Because yeah. you can yeah, save the cool. results too, which is really ideal. And it's so much easier than sharing screenshots all the time. Oh, it's, it's brilliant, Can't stand it? doing that. No, it's, yeah, I love it. I think it's, it's really, really good. And yeah, we've got the dark theme. Yeah. I love it. Love dark the themes. themes. You know, the themes are great. You can't go wrong with a dark theme. Look at them Magic Studio, we don't get any, well, we get the light theme or the blue theme, whatever they call it, don't they? But it doesn't make yeah. any difference. You know, they, they teased us, didn't they? Here it is, look. Here it is. Uh, so it's popping off my screen, look. Let's close that down. They, they, yeah, they sort of teased us, didn't they, in the early version, the, the pre-release version of Magic Studio. They put the dark theme in there. So, yeah, dark theme's in, great, great. And then yeah. the actual, actual version came out and it was just, it was gone again. Yeah. yeah, we got it. We got, we got, we got, we got our colour things. Um, I thought this could be, this could be my num number six. This wasn't on my list of themes. <laughs> we we'll made this one number six. You know? It's like a Christmas great. list. Yeah, exactly. Put it on the list. Send it off to Father Christmas. This is what yeah. we want. <laughs> <laughs> we want this imagine studio. <laughs> Tomorrow. Yes, you've got, you've got burn your eyes out mode. Oh, yeah. You know, you've got. Burn your eyes out mode. <laughs> quiet, quiet light, which just is, I don't know what that's all about. Yeah. Same as the last one, but it's gone a little bit purple. That's a bit odd. Yeah, I'm not you sure know, about that one. That weird solar eyes light that some people like. I'm not yeah. Sure about. It makes the monitors dying, I think. Good on the eyes. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Looks horrible, though. <laughs> The, the, the 1980s vector graphic version, oh, which, is, which is cracking, didn't it? It looks like an old, old game from, it's like one of the films, didn't it? Tron or something like that, you expect it yeah. to be on. <laughs> it looks like DOS or something, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite cool. You can see where you're going. I, I quite like it. Yeah. I, I was mucking around there along with different themes. I thought, oh, that's horrible. I can't see this one. That's horrible. And I started working on something. That... I never changed it back. And I actually started liking it. It's quite cool. But yeah, and I think you can create themes as well. I don't know how you do that. It's, I don't know how you go about creating themes. That's my favourite though, just the, the normal straight mm. dark theme. But yeah, yeah, I think you can create themes as well. I know you can certainly import themes in. So I think you can kind of set up how you like, which, is, which I really like, which is something mm. you don't get the Management Studio. But anyway, 
Number five on my list of features that we like in Azure Data Studio is code snippets. Now, code snippets are really, really cool. I mean, we had an in management studio. I never really got on with management studio code snippets. Did you ever use them much, Dade? No, not really. No, I had to play with them once and I thought, oh, this is quite good. And I, I thought, oh, I could, you know, put a few little snippets in there for like common um, store procedure calls and that that, that mm. I use. <laughs> it didn't last very long. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think before it's they were difficult to get to, weren't they? They're a bit of a pain yeah. to get to. You I mean you could do it through shortcut keys and things. It's not something I've ever got into. No. But now we've we've managed with uh data studio. We've we've got the IntelliSense, which is really nice. Much, much nicer than okay, let's make it another one. Got another one, another one of my top features is IntelliSense. You know, we've got nice, quick IntelliSense. Let's say from what data says uh, SQL and Carlos. I mean, IntelliSense is lovely. It's really, mm. really good, really quick. Ah, uh, like, yeah, the little icons are nice. They're, they're completely different to Management Studio. Like there, you had a little um, database icon. That was quite cool. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, it's, it's no, they're, they're really good. We like IntelliSense. So what we can do now as part of IntelliSense, if we start off, we type in SQL, we get a ton of snippets come up straight away. Mm. We can just choose our snippet. So let's say we want a snippet, we've forgotten how to, Right, we're, on, we're on cursors. Let's create a filthy cursor. <laughs> so straight away, we've got a snippet for creating a cursor. Uh, a this filthy is cursor. It is a, it's not. We like, well, they're all right, aren't they? We, I'm not going to diss cursors too much. They're definitely I've got love uses. for a cursor. Yeah. If certainly, um, yeah, if it's used in the right place. But no problem yeah. with a cursor. Certainly better than certain um, people <laughs> you come up with. Certain them. monstrosities <laughs> that we've seen out there in the wild. Yeah. yeah. You know what we're talking about. I've seen a few. But yeah, it's really, really cool. So these are really good. So you, there's a ton of these out there. So it gives you a little bit of a template. Okay. Names are a bit naff though. So the names are a bit rubbish, but you know, nice thing is what we can do. If we double click on that name, it highlights it. Hmm. We right click, we can say change all occurrences. Now anything we type DB cursor, let's call this our lovely cursor. Anywhere that DB cursor was on that script, it's now been changed, you see, nice. which is really cool. Because quite often these scripts, you get these scripts and you have to go through, change it in name one place, and you've got to go through and change it all. It's just dead easy. Same with the variables, column name one. Okay, let's, we right click, change all the occurrences, and we're just kind of call that, I don't know, perhaps we've got a um, database about know, dogs or something. So let's call it dog name is our, is our variable name. So everywhere that, was column name one has now been changed to dog name. So it's really easy as well to sort of customize these things. So yeah, I like these. Yeah, I like there's, that. there's a whole yeah. host of them in there as well. So for things that you might forget to do, you know, create a temp table, creating a table. You know, I mean, there's loads of things. I don't know what you're like, I always forget the syntax on certain things. So I suppose so if nothing else, it's quite, in there, but. it's quite good from the point of view of, um, formatting as well isn't it so you could actually just do that just for the point of view of formatting you could i know you'd know how to create a table syntax but you could use that from the point of view of formatting so it's always formatted the same every time it keeps them standard doesn't it yeah 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 i didn't thought about that that's yeah that's quite cool the beautiful thing is you can also make your own though and this is i think where they really really come in nicely the ones that give you all right you know a bit lukewarm with them there's not a lot there that gets me particularly excited but we can make our own you know, as soon as you can start doing that, it gets quite exciting. So if we hit Control, Shift, and P, we pop up the little um, command box. So if we just type in here, configure user snippets. Okay, it's come up, it's recently used. So configure user snippets. Um, we want to do a SQL, which is up top, because, and it'll bring us these little things. So now we can start putting our own little uh, snippets in here. So it gives us a little bit of a template on how to do it. So first thing we want to do, we want to give this thing a name. So let's create a snippet. Okay, it's not going to be much anything particularly exciting, but um, we're going to do something that's going to return all databases from sys databases, say. So let's just call this select all database names. So we've given it a name. It's all kind of JSON formatting, which I must admit, I'm not all up on JSON, but we'll give it a go. Why is that grizzling about that open bracket? That don't know. Ah, because I need to end my line with a colon. 
So first thing we need to put in here is a prefix. So again, our little, um, I was gonna say our IntelliSense has got it there for us. So the prefix, this is, this is the thing we're gonna see when we um, type in our snippet. So we're gonna call this one SQL select DB names. That'll do us. Moving now to the next one, we need to give it a body. So the body, I have closed with a colon again. Is it a colon I need to close with? No, it's a comma on that one. So the body is going to be our, that's our SQL statement. So this is going to be a dead simple one. You can make these a lot more complicated. There's tons of stuff you can do with these. I'm just going to make it nice and simple and just say, select name from sys.databases. Okay, nothing particularly exciting, but it's an example. Finish with a comma. And then we then have to give it a description. So we know what it is. So again, we're just going to say this is going to be, I can't type, select all database names. Okay, and that's it. That's all we need to do, correct snippet. So if we close this now, we'll save it. So now we can come in here, we can type SQL, select all database names. And there it is, there's our snippet. It's, it's dead simple, you know? That's a pretty simple snippet, okay? It's nothing particularly exciting about that one, but you could do, you could put anything into that snippet. Any code that you, you use all the time, it's, it's really, really handy for that. So that is my number five feature. You like That's that one? That's really cool. Yeah, I like that. You like that one? Yeah, I think that, that could be really useful, couldn't it? It's for all, right. all those little, little ad hoc queries you have that you, you know you use on a regular basis, but not enough to be a proc or something, but just those yeah. little ones that, yeah. Those little annoying stuff you've got in your, in your scripts folder, yeah. somewhere that you're constantly going off and loading your scripts in. You know, how easy is it to get to now? You know, I don't need to go off and all I can do is type in secret. Oh, look, and there it is, look. Yeah. Nicely, nicely there for me. Make sure you give it a description so you know what it is. But there it is. You just click that yeah. and then bang, there it is. You know, it's, that it's, could be it's really simple. handy for support teams as well, couldn't it? You've got, you've got teams of support guys and, you know, you've got queries that, like common queries they use for diagnosing database problems, mm. like application problems within the database, not, not, DBA stuff it could be really good for that. Yeah, yeah, I, I really like that. I, I got quite yeah. excited at the night I found that one out. So yeah. yeah, yeah, much more useful than snippets we've had in the past. I think um, it's just they're just so easy to get to now. That's that's what I think what what's really nice about it. Dead easy to create, dead easy to get to. So that's that's snippets. Cool. Number four at number four <laughs> in my <laughs> my my shared data studio features, we've got notebooks. <laughs> we like notebooks notebooks okay so you know here okay this is a straight query window you know exactly the same as what we've got in management studio nothing much different with it let's get a shot of that don't want to save it and instead let's come in here and that's a new notebook and these are great so this this is what i used last last time when i did database encryption or the backup encryption demo we use notebooks Notebooks, you can do a few things with this. You can create different blocks. So we can create a code block, okay? In that code block, we can write a SQL query. So let's just select star from sys databases just because that's what I've been doing. Obviously, I'm not using the select star at all. Okay, we've got a code block. And say, if this is something we just want to run, we've got, we got a script, we want to run it piece by piece by piece. We can create a second code, code block. And this one can be six star from sys dot tables. Okay. Now in the past, if we had this sort of this sort of script, okay, then this is quite simple, but sometimes you have quite complicated stuff where you need to run a block first, then run another block, then run another block, then run another block. So what you do you have to highlight it, hit F5 to run that section, highlight the next bit, hit F5 to run that section. I mean, how often have you done that where you've highlighted it, accidentally clicked off, hit F5 and run the whole thing? You know, we've all done that, wouldn't we? Or not highlight the whole lot and then you get a weird error message. Or 
highlighted everything by your wear clause and then boff, you just delete it out of your table. You know, so this makes this really, really easy now because we don't need to do that. We don't need to do this, this highlighting anymore because we can just run each code block individually. We can say, right, this code block here, bang, I want to run that one, doff, it'll go off and run it for us. And it gives the results. We can say, cool, okay, next code block, let's run this code block, boff, off it'll go, and it'll give us the results. And the beautiful thing I really like here is that we keep the previous results on the screen. So we can run this code block and we've got results. We can run a further down code block and we get the results yeah. again. You know, it's, it's just, it's, I don't know, it's really nice. I like it. I mean, if you've done anything with Python, you're going to be used to Jupyter Notebooks. And this is exactly the same thing. You know, it works exactly the same way. But the other beautiful thing is we don't just, we can't, don't have to just run SQL from here. Up here we've got kernel. We can run a few other things. We can run SQL. We can run PySpark. We've got Spark, Python, PowerShell, R. You know, we can run all these different languages as well in it. It's not just pegged down to SQL, which I really, really like. I think that's pretty cool. So that's good. That's code blocks. We can also pop in text blocks. So a text block, exactly what it says. Right? We, it's somewhere we can just write a little bit of text. So this is, I can even type. <laughs> this is my text. Okay, so we can have text in our in our blocks. So I think we can. I've got, oh, I've got the camera right in the way of where I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> but we can put, so we can put text in the block now, and we can format this text as well. So it uses kind of like a, like a markdown notation. So we can we can highlight this stuff. So let's put in a couple of hash symbols i'm um, on a different laptop and i don't know where it's moved the hash key to there it is up there one two three of those so we're going to say this is my big text right because by putting those three hashes in it's going to make it a little bit bigger we can do the same thing again with two hashes. So this is now my bigger text. So it makes it a little bit bigger. Mm. And again, yeah, you're kind of guessing where we're going next. <laughs> bigger, bigger, bigger. <laughs> any, any idea where we're heading next for? <laughs> so let's change it again. Let's go to one, and this is going to be my biggest. That's my biggest text. So we can, we can start formatting as well. And we can, we can make this in bold. We can, I, we can make it italics. Um, we can put images in there as well. So if you saw my last notebook when I did the, um, the backup encryption, we had the little SQL undercover TV logo at the top. So we can pop images in there as well. So oh, this is really, really cool. So in the past where we've had to, any of this sort of stuff, any of the instructions we had to do, we had to put them in comments. You know, F in comments, quite difficult to read, all one, one typeface, one size. Now we can have nicely formatted structures we can have headers we can have diagrams if we're trying to explain how something works i don't know, i think it's really good we, we we like the notebooks notebooks are quite happy on my my, my number four <laughs> as your as your data studio feature i saw something I, I can't remember when it was but when you run a query can you can you change the output as well to can you do a graph or something as an ah, output? wait 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 now you're now you're jumping ahead of me yeah <laughs> <laughs> Now you're heading into my number three oh, data studio guess. feature. <laughs> so no, I didn't know it wasn't great. pre-scripted. It wasn't even pre-scripted. It wasn't, wasn't it? That was, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Complete that's impromptu. Cool. Didn't even know. <laughs> impromptu? Impromptu. Impromptu. <laughs> it's like Ubuntu, isn't it? Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, oh, no, not, 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 not Linux. Let's, let's not go down Linux, though. Let's not. Let's leave Linux where it needs to be. <laughs> 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 Next thing we're going to be talking about MySQL or Oracle or something. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, we've got to just upset <clears throat> all the Oracle, Linux and um, MySQL guys now. They've just, they've just tamed, <laughs> to, tuned out on us. <laughs> Cancel subscription. <laughs> all these <laughs> slagging off Linux. <laughs> uh, Linux is growing. It's growing on me a bit. Yeah, you're you're working bit. a bit with it now, aren't you? You're working a bit yeah, more with it. a bit. I dabble. Is that just, just with Oracle? Have you done any SQL in Linux yet? Um, no, it's just, just the operating system at the moment. Yeah, that's all. That's all it is, just OS stuff, because um, 
mainly like application servers and that that sort of stuff. Fair enough. So you guys, you guys looking at it? It makes sense for you actually because you're quite a Linux-based setup, aren't you? It makes sense to go perhaps Linux and SQL Linux, perhaps. Um, or, or Docker. Yeah, I think, yeah, I, think, it. I think hopefully things will start moving the other direction towards Windows. That and sounds everyone's, more sensible. Everyone's winning. Yeah, <laughs> sounds much more sensible. <laughs> back to familiar territory. Yeah. Anyway, back we, we, we've completely derailed again as normal. <laughs> um, so number three, at number three in my top five Azure Data Studio features, we have data visualizations. So these are great. These are really, I really like these. These are quite exciting. So at the moment, let's just say we want to do a query. We want to look at, I don't know. We want to look at weight stats, right? So let's select star. I'll, I'll, I'll tie this down because I just can't remember all the column names and weight stats, but from if I've been if I've been organised, I've actually got this. Um, I've done a demo, <laughs> wouldn't I? I'd have written down. But, oh, it's at the top. That's handy. It must be because I've used it recently. So let's just run that off. Okay, let's um, say so let's take weight type and weight time milliseconds. Right, let's have those. Let's. Order by, want to, let's say we want to see the top 10, right? Let's order by wait time milliseconds descending and we'll select the top 10. And then normally when you look at this stuff, you just get a wall of text, okay? And it's kind of what you were talking about a while ago, Ed, wasn't it? A couple of weeks back about mm. when you were looking at visualizing data <clears throat> and using Excel for visualizing data. I mean, you use the, the Blitz collection of stuff. Yeah. And you do, you look at this and you just get a bunch of text. I mean, there's nothing particularly interesting here because this SQL server just sits around not really doing very much half the time. So they're all pretty benign weights. But let's say if there wasn't juicy there, right? it's, it's really difficult to, to make sense of this. Yeah, we've got numbers. Yeah, I can see we've got a big number here, but really how big is a number? You know? mm. So what we can now do in Data Studio, we can visualize this. And it doesn't have to be performance. You could do this for, for any sort of data. So we go over here, this little, we've got a little graph button, a little chart button here. We hit that straight away. We can look at visualizing it. So let's change our day direction to vertical. And straight away, we've got wait time. We've got our wait type. So hold on, what are we doing here? Is that going right? It's going right, isn't it? So yeah, you see our wait, our wait type's at the bottom. <laughs> it, was a, it was a bad data set to choose, really, wasn't it? Because we've got yeah. one big one and tons of little ones. But straight away, so we can say, wow, okay, this guy is, is big. Okay, you know, we looked at this, we can say, yeah, it looks pretty big. Mm. Under the chart, straight away, we can say, oh, now this guy is big. So, yeah, it's dead easy. We can make graphs really, really easily. You now we can give it a label. Um, wait time. We can give it a minimum, maximum value if we want to. We get an X axis, which is going to be our weight types. Oh, this messed up the typing on that. So it's really nice. We can, yeah, just plot these graphs dead easy like that. We can save it as an image. We want to save it off somewhere. So we've got some nice little trends. Uh, we can change the type of chart. So we might bar chart. Okay, it's probably useful in this particular case, but not everyone. We might want to see a donut chart. Bang, we've got a donut chart. You know, I know, AG, you like donut charts? <laughs> do love a donut. Why, why, why donut chart over pie chart? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It just, <laughs> it's just, it's just appealing, isn't it? Yeah, it's, a, it's a pie chart with, a, with the middle chopped out. Yeah, What's that it all looks, about? I don't know. I don't know. I like food. I just. <laughs> yeah, well, not wrong with a pie, mate. Yeah. <laughs> True. Uh, accounts pretty pointless in this case. Uh, I don't think this image doesn't do anything useful for us. But yes, yeah, so there's, there's a ton of different stuff we can we can change the type of charts. It, it's really cool. It's yeah, a really, it's really nice good. way of visualizing data. It was. I mean, oh, right, you can say, copy his image as well. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Save absolutely. image, copy his image. Oh, it's great, isn't it? For it's a, good, for isn't a quick, it? A real quick, you know, render of it. Bang, save off. You know, that's really handy. Yeah, I, I really like this. Um, yeah, if you just want to quick something, because like you were saying before, quite yeah. often you might only have one data set. You want to you visualize it somehow. Yeah. You've got to go and take that off. You've got to chuck it into Power BI, Excel, whatever you're using to do it, which is effort. 
we can just hit this button, bang, we've got it. You know, sometimes you haven't got that that luxury, which is which is the problem I had that time. I just didn't I just didn't have the benefit of having Power BI locally installed somewhere where I could get to. Um, so I just used what I had, and this could be the same sort of thing. You know, you could have access to this, but you don't have access to Power BI anywhere, mm. and you know, just chuck it in quickly, and you've got a quick visualization. It might just be that someone needs that. Oh, can you give me a report of such and such? Well, yeah, all right then. Query, bang, copy that. Out you go. Yeah, I think we've, we've all had it where someone says, "Oh, but no." For example, give me, a, give me, a, give me a, a show of all the the database sizes on the server. You know, who's my yeah. biggest database? Yeah. Bang, there you go. You can create this off the image, into the email, off to your manager, whoever it is asking for it. It's dead easy, isn't it? Yeah. I, I really, really like this. Yeah, I like that too. So from that, then on to my. At number two, my number two favorite feature in Azure Data Studio is the dashboards. So I don't know if you've seen these dashboards, Aid. But not. if we double click on the a server name, it gives us a little bit of a dashboard about that server. So we can see various, we can see a few things. Now it's a little bit basic at the moment, but we can see backup status. That's dead handy. You know, we can see I'm not taking my backups. Hmm. You know, we, we've got version, we've got addition, we've got the computer name, we've got OS versions. It's, got, it's quite useful. We've got a little bit of information here straight away. Down, come down here, we can see, we can see database sizes. You know, we can see, we can see our file sizes. Um, pink is a data site, data file, blue is a log file. My super cover database obviously hasn't got very much in it at all. It's only eight American size. But I guess what's on here, I think, it's this box. It's only a... Yeah, I've actually done anything. This is a brand new box. All I've done is stick a single on the cup database on it. But yes, we, <laughs> so we've got a little bit of information there, a little, a little, a little dashboard. Um, that's serve level. We can also do database level dashboards. So we click, double click on the database. We can, again, get the information straight away. We can see recovery model. You know, when was the last backup taken? When was the last log? What's the compact? Who's the owner? You know, it's, it's quite handy. There's a few things we can do from there. So we can create backups from there as well, which is quite handy. Let's say we want to back this thing up. You know, we actually get a quite a nice now, quite a nice little kind of GUI to backup database, which with Management Studio, the GUI and backup database was horrible. I never, never used it. But, but now it's actually quite nice. You know, using Data Studio, it's actually quite nice. You know? So we've got little options like that. I'll just cancel that off. I'm not going into that too much. We can restore a backup. You know, again, do the same sort of thing. So it's, it's a nice little place that we can just do stuff from. But the really, really cool thing about these, uh, these, these dashboards is we can add to them ourselves. Like I say, it's pretty basic off the, just out of the box. This is the out of the box version. But what we can do if we wanted to, we can add things, we can add graphs. So let's come back over here to our little graph we set up earlier. Okay? Let's say, I, know, I wanna take this graph, I wanna pick that up, and I wanna send that, and I wanna put that on a dashboard at a server level. And I'll go at doing that. Well, first thing I can do, I need to save the query. So let's just save that query somewhere. Let's call that wait stats. Okay, that's saved there. Excellent. You can then generate your graph. So we'll change that to vertical. Um, what should we use? Should we use a, use a little donut? Chart for you, Egg, one of your favourites. Yeah. Let's make a donut chart, right? This looks horrible, isn't it? I, I like a pie chart. I much prefer a pie chart, but <laughs> there we go. Okay, so once we've got that, we can then go into a create insight. Hit create insight. It's going to give us a ton of old, sort of, some sort of JSON nonsense. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jason, I've got my head around Jason too much. But that's it. So it's going to give us a definition for that particular insight. Okay. So let's head back to our graph. And now if we hit control comma, we can come and search settings and we want to start, we want to search for dashboard. Okay, so it gives us a little menu we can uh, configure our dashboard. So dashboard ser server widgets we're going to hit. So let's hit server widgets, opens up a nice JSON file for us. Um, what we're looking for is dashboard server widgets, which we don't have. So let's 
pop in here. Dashboard server widgets, bosh. Okay, it's gonna open up a thing for us. So these are all our widgets. These are all the widgets that are gonna appear on our dashboard. So we can add to that. So what we do, we can come over here, we can come and take this, come into our JSON settings. We need to end the line above with a comma. I did this before and it kept failing on me. I couldn't figure out why. It's because I forgot to end the line above with a comma. So before we do that, end the line of a comma, paste in the JSON definition from our insight. Jobs are good. Un. Let's close this down. It should prompt to save. Let's save that. Let's come back over, open up another menu. And now, it all being well, we haven't got, what have I done wrong? Why is it not showing up? Oh, there we are, look, there it is. <laughs> yes, yeah, so you, you can create this. So this is what I love, this, this, that's, my, that's my number one, that's not, that's my number two. We haven't got number one, we've done on a bit, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> that's my number two feature, which is the dashboard and the fact that we can add our own stuff in here as well, which is really, really cool. So we, and we can really customize. I've seen, I've seen some of these done where people have created really nice dashboards that just give so much information. You can come in, look at services, so much stuff. It's, it's almost kind of like a monitoring tool in, in some way, some people, the way some people are using it. Hmm. Really, really good. Um, and then that brings me on to our final number one, top of the tree <laughs> feature of Azure Data Studio, which for me is the extensions. Extensions are really cool. So out of the box, a Geo Data Studio, you know what? It's all right, you know, it does what it does. But the extensions are really great. So these extensions are things that some of them have released by Microsoft, some of them have other people have released, that we can just add just add-ins to, to Data Studio. Um, so we've got things like this, like the admin pack. We can just install these. We can come here, we can install what we like. So things like the ad, admin pack, you know, this gives us a lot of functionality that we'd get from uh, Management Studio. It brings a lot of Management Studio functionality almost into Data Studio. Uh, we've got Administration Tool. Does the same sort of thing. I mean, by default, we can't see agent jobs in Azure Data Studio. This, this allows us to see that. I mean, as you can see, loads and loads of stuff. This is the sort of stuff it brings in. Mm. You know, it, it's really cool. You know, it just, just lets us add, add stuff in. So yeah, there's, a few, there's, there's tons of stuff out there. So we've got things like Postgres, you know, want connectivity to Postgres database, install the add-in. You know, PowerShell, Redgate's got a SQL search one. Century One Plan Explorer have got, a, got an add-in here, so we can bring the Century One Plan Explorer into Data Studio. Uh, there's just tons and tons of stuff. Um, one that I know is in here, which is pretty cool, is the... Um, who is active? Who is active has got a got an add-in. You know, so this, this thing gives us a load of graphs and charts based on who is active information. So again, this kind of goes back to that dashboard. So this then adds loads of who is active based graphs into the dashboard. You know, and there's just there's nice. so much, so much stuff here though. It's and it's got and you can write so anyone can write this stuff. Anyone can write on these these uh, these add-ins. Um, Brent's got one for for the first responder kit. So let's, so there's one for the first responder kit. I think there's one in there for pace the plan as well. Yeah, there's a pace the plan one. So there's, there's tons of add-ins that we can just add in and bring, add functionality to Data Studio. And it's, there's some really, really nice stuff out there. I mean, it's still pretty early days, I think, and there's not a lot released, but as more people come on with it, more people start developing things, we're going to see more and more stuff added in here, I think. And it's bringing a lot of functionality that we weren't seeing that was only in Management Studio. We're now seeing that starting to come into, into Data Studio through, through the plugins or through the add-ins. So I'll say one that I mentioned was, was a SQL agent. You know, install this thing straight out of the box. You can't see SQL agent. You can't see jobs. Pop the admin tools plugin and suddenly, not a great server to show because there's not many jobs on there, but straight away we can see we can see jobs and see information about jobs and agent jobs. So it brings all this extra stuff in. So that is why it's one of the number one 
feature of Zero Data Studio is these, these extensions. And I guess at some point there probably will be a super undercover extension for, for catalog and, and, and no doubt the inspector I aid. Oh, definitely. You know, oh, could definitely see some uses for it there, especially right. those visualizations. Yeah, oh, it's, 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 I just love this stuff. I mean, it's, look at the stuff that's in here already. I mean, Red Gator on it, Century One on it with the Plan Explorer. Right? It's just, mm. it's, there's some really, really quite exciting stuff in there. You know, it's, let's have a little look down through some of this stuff. I mean, language, people bringing languages in. Yeah, that's good. It is, it's really, really good. Add a new database. There's an interesting one. So we can't do that at the moment with, managed, with um, hmm. Data Studio. If I want to add a new database, I can't do right click, new database. There isn't one. Hmm. So I'm assuming, let's give it a go. Let's install this fella. Oh, it's going to be external. Okay. So some, some of these will install directly through management, through a, I keep saying management studio, data studio. Sometimes it'll punch you off to an external download or you'll download a Visix file. So if you do that, just, that's, it's dead easy to do. Uh, you download the file and then we can import them kind of files and we can install extension from physics file and that is another way to install the install the add-ins or the extensions but yeah no it's really cool i really like this i really like um data studio as well it's it's growing the more i use it the more it's growing on me and i, I can yeah i can see it becoming my, my go-to especially as more of those extensions come in i think so yeah there we go that's uh that is data studio Nice. I need to give it some more use. I really do. It's got some really cool uses, especially that runbook stuff. I really need to get into that. Yeah, yeah. The notebook notebooks are really, really nice. Like I say, yeah, you can save yeah. you can save them with results. So you can, if someone, it's great. It's great. I suppose if you're doing troubleshooting, remote troubleshooting. I mean, you get it all the time, don't you? Where you've got a, a customer, you can't connect straight to their SQL Server for whatever reason, and they're having issues. You're trying to talk them through on the phone or talking through email. I'll run this script, run that script. What does it send? Mm. Send me better results. You know, you can just send them a notebook. Say here, bang, run all those, yeah. run those, send the notebook back, back to me with results. Straight away, I've got all the results that I need. Start mm. trying to work out what's going on. It's, it's one we get quite a lot with um, log shipping. So we've got a bunch of customers that we send transaction logs out to. Um, as a, and they, they sort of log ship them in, they, they play them in. And every now and then it goes, it goes pear shaped, and it's an absolutely nightmare to try and figure out what's going on. If you can't get access to that SQL server, it's an absolutely nightmare. I send them this script, I'll run this script, send the results back, run that script, send the results back. You know, with those notebooks like that, you could just have a standard thing, standard notebook, send it out to them, run all those, send the whole lot back to me, and we'll see exactly what's going on. Yeah. It's a good thing because they, they can keep that their side, and when, if they get a problem again, just fill it in again, run them all, send it back over. Easy. Mm hmm. Yeah, and the same goes for service desk, I suppose, as well. You could do it for a service yeah. desk guy, you know, a, a basic kind of troubleshooting. You're having problems now. I mean, you know what it's like. You get a phone call, you get a, a call or something gets raised with you. Oh, we're we having problems with SQL Server and it was all mm. running slow an hour ago. Looks fine to me now. We've lost all that data. I can't see what's going on. If we had a standard notebook, you could get them to run all those things and they catch it at the time. Yeah. And you can analyze it later on. It's... It's, yeah, they're, they're, they're really good. Hmm. Very, very good. Yeah, I like the idea of that, actually. In mean, like a troubleshooting scenario, if there was a certain set of scripts that you always want to run to be sure that all those things are covered, you could, you could just yeah, run all these things, give us the results, and you can guarantee you've got it every single time there's some sort of incident of some sort. It's a really good way of doing things, actually. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I, yeah, yeah, we we like them. We like we like notebooks. We like Data yeah. Studio. There's so much. There's so much cool stuff in there, though. I mean, that's, I just scratch what I, I say scratch five. We we went into a few others as well, but yeah. but yeah, yeah, there's so much, so much really good stuff that can just make mm. make life so easy. I think. I mean, the snippets, brilliant. Notebooks, brilliant. You know, data visualizations of dashboards, and yeah, the extent the extensions. I think is where it really really wins for me because that just means that we, we can just build what we want onto this thing. it's a framework that we can now build onto hmm. and yeah i know yeah, you, you could you could build snappings for management studio but you know i never head around it you know yeah. it wasn't an, it wasn't an easy thing to do you know it wasn't an easy thing to do unless you understood how to code and how to how to do that it was a really difficult thing to get your head around but anyway i think that's 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 us that's that's our, our christmas christmas special over so have a good christmas aid yeah, Merry Christmas. Yeah, have a good Christmas, everyone. So cheers for watching again. And again, catch us in the usual places. You can subscribe to YouTube. 
check us out on sequelandthecover.com, on Twitter, on Slack, and Facebook, and wherever else. So have a good Christmas, and we'll see you in the new year. Take it easy. See you later.